Chapter 5 On the Sands of the Chitravati River The month of Magha had commenced. I told the children, The holy bath taken in the month of Magha is very sacred. However, it is not enough if you simply perform this Magha Snana. You must also undertake circumambulation of a temple. Accordingly, myself and the group of children around me used to visit the Anjaneya temple as early as four o'clock in the morning. There used to be a big lake behind the Anjaneya Swami temple. We used to take our early morning bath in that lake. However, the small children could not get up from bed so early. Hence, I used to lift them up, take them to the lake and bathe them personally. After taking bath, we would go to the temple. Once, all of us went to the temple. I told the children, You perform circumambulation to Anjaneya Swami and come back. I will stay here. They went accordingly. However, they discussed among themselves, Why not Raju also come along with us? He taught us so many things. Without him, we cannot undertake any work. Hence, he should lead us and we must follow. Having made such a resolve, they came running to me and said, Raju, you must accompany us. I told them, I will come, but first you go and finish your circumambulation and come. However, they were very insistent that I should accompany them. They firmly told me, Unless you come, we will not go. I told them, I have pain in my legs. They then said, we will lift you and carry you physically. Thus, when they pressurized me so lovingly, I could not say no. I, therefore, started doing circumambulation to the Anjaneya temple along with them. Believe it or not, a big monkey suddenly appeared from nowhere and stood in front of me, obstructing my way. The children around me wondered, we have never seen such a big monkey in this village. From where did it come? They tried their best to drive it away, but it did not move. Who is that monkey? It was Hanuman, the servant of Lord Rama, verily. They did not realize this truth. Hanuman himself has come in the form of that monkey and prayed, Swami, I am the one who has to do circumambulation to you. You should not do it for me. Accordingly, I informed the children. Hanuman did not like my circumambulation to him. Hence, I will give it up. From that day onwards, a lot of transformation had taken place in the children. They experienced some divine feelings. While returning home, they informed everybody. Today, when Raju was performing circumambulation in the Hanuman temple along with us, a big monkey appeared from nowhere and stood in front of him, preventing him from doing circumambulation. During the full moon nights, we used to go to the Chitravati river. All the children used to spend time happily on the Chitravati sands right from 6 o'clock in the evening to late in the night. The elders also used to join us. They used to play kabaddi and some other games. I used to encourage the children, saying, You also go and play. If the body is to be healthy, there must be sufficient exercise for it. But the children were reluctant to leave me. They used to insist, Raju, we are interested only in bhajans. If you sing, we will follow you. Sometimes, they would request me to compose new songs. I used to compose a number of songs. They expressed surprise at my poetic skills, saying, Raju, how did you acquire these poetic skills? They used to sing the songs composed by me and feel very happy. They praised me, saying, Raju, you composed beautiful songs and set them to good tunes. I would tell them, if you have any wishes to be fulfilled, tell me, but don't praise me like this.
In those days, several children used to follow me. They were Keshanna, Ranganna, Subbanna, Ramanna, etc. Those children were very dear to me. They also loved me very much. Their love and innocence could not be described in words. A boy of seven years used to place my head on his lap and put me to sleep, saying, Raju, you are very much tired. Take rest for some time. After some time, he would say, Raju, since you had placed your head on my thigh and slept, all the pain that was there earlier had disappeared. I experienced some inexplicable joy. Thereafter, the other children also craved for that privilege. They chalked out a method by which all the children would get such an opportunity. According to that, I was expected to place my head on each one's thigh and relax to a count of fifty numbers. Thus, I used to provide joy to one and all. There was an elderly gentleman of seventy years in those days in that village. He used to walk up to the Satyabhama temple, then wash his feet and sit on the pile relaxing. One day, while I was walking in front of him, he called me, saying, Raju, come, come. I went near him and inquired what he wanted. He replied, Raju, I am bulky. I have a plumpy thigh. Please sit on my thigh for some time. I inquired what benefit he would derive by my sitting on his thigh. He replied, I cannot describe that benefit in words. It is infinite and miraculous. Not only that, Raju, you are like a brilliant light to Puttaparthi. In the years to come, your name and fame will spread to the entire world. His word has come true in letter and spirit. The name and fame of Raju, as well as that of Puttaparthi, have spread far and wide, not only in the country of Bharat, but to the entire world. In those days, it was very difficult to reach Puttaparthi, even on foot. Such a remote village of Puttaparthi has earned a prominent place in the world map now. Subbarayadu, of course, forecast this metamorphosis even in those days. Poor man! He had no children. He hugged me very affectionately and said, Raju, how fortunate I am to have taken you on my lap and made you sit there for some time. A time will come when the entire world will crave for your benevolent look even for a fraction of a second. He also told me, your father and myself are not in talking terms with each other. Your father does not like me to talk to you even. Hence, please do not reveal this to him. I, however, replied, There is nothing wrong. I will tell him the truth. He is a good man. As soon as I returned home, Graham Abai questioned me, Why do you talk to that Subbaraidu? I inquired, why I should not talk to him? He replied, He is my enemy. I told him, Maybe he is an enemy to you, but not to me. Hence, I talk to him. I see nothing wrong in it. Then, with folded hands, I requested him, Look, you are an elderly person. You should not hate anybody. Remove hatred and develop our village with unity among all the villagers. Then he inquired, What was it that Subaraidu was talking to you? I replied, He is saying that on account of my divinity, this village of Puttaparthi would shine as a beacon light to the entire world. On hearing this reply, Grihamabai became very angry. Seething with anger, he questioned, what is that divinity in you that these people extol so much? Then I brought some flowers. Holding them with both my hands, I threw them on the ground, saying, Do you know who I am? Miraculously, the flowers arranged themselves 
as Sri Satya Sai Baba in Telugu letters. From that moment onwards, Griham Abai was careful in dealing with me. Thus, I used to teach good things to both children as well as elders right from my childhood.